good afternoon thank you any uh, so can you please introduce yourself to me uh, tell me about your background your interests uh, on pharmacovigilance why are you looking for a career so just a brief uh, uh, introduction yes sir so i am dr ani koilo i have done bhms in 2007 then i have done a post graduation diploma in emergency medical services followed i have done bls acls and i was a healthcare provider also Mm -hmm. And uh, my interest in PV was generated by my aunt, who is right now uh, like she is a director uh, in home nurses for you. She is conducting the, it is a site uh, management organization. So okay. she was the one. If you are not interested in medical, if you want to join non medical, if you are tired of medical, join something this. So she was the one who gave me an interest in this, like mm -hmm. seeing her working on it. Okay. Okay, fair enough. And so, uh, what do you feel that uh, is it uh, a right option, career option for people who are in, uh, you know, medics or paramedics? Uh, and why why does it uh, interest you so much? One thing is that you have been introduced by your family member, yes. but then uh, why does it interest you? What is your area of uh, interest in pharmacovigilance? So like uh, uh, I didn't had any technology knowledge. It was always medical because I had three uh, three and a half year of experience in med uh, in medical line. But when it comes to this uh, uh, reporting and especially the safety, the adverse reactions. When I see in the hospitals, they are very limited, pay, limited like related to some antibiotics or those things, and mm. giving immediate treatment. So my uh, were so. I'm so much into medical and then like entering and into clinical research was my like new area of getting knowledge. Okay. Okay. And so what would you say is pharmacovigilance? Why are we doing it? What is the purpose of doing pharmacovigilance? So when we see into definition, the pharmacovigilance is the science and activity, which is related to the assessment detection, uh, prevention of the adverse effects related to a medicinal product which is being administered. And when it comes to purpose, uh, the purpose of pharmacovigilance is that it, uh, it is for the safe use of uh, medicine product, medical medicinal product in public after like during after the product is marketed. So for reporting the adverse, uh, re uh, adverse drug reactions or adverse events of the medicinal products okay okay and so what is the difference between an adverse drug reaction and an event okay so adverse event is an untoward medical occurrence where in a patient when a med med medicinal product is administered uh, and they experience uh, uh, side effects of the medicinal product but they are not causally related it may or may not be causally related with the uh, drug product and when it comes to adverse reaction, it's a response which is noxious and unintended. Uh, when given uh, to the patient at normal doses, uh, uh, when used in humans, uh, they'll have this uh, uh, for prophylaxis or for therapy of a disease or for any modification of the physiological functions. Hmm. Right. And so what are the examples when I say of... Uh... Uh, say an adverse event, what could be an example of an event? Do you feel that uh, uh, I have taken a medicine and after that, after a uh, point of time, I start to have hair loss, right? Now, yes, uh, will it be an event or a reaction based on the report that I give you? So if I say I took the medicine and I had a uh, hair fall after this, right? And yes. I was I was already taking uh, uh, many other uh, drugs uh, like uh, I had some past history of hair fall, okay. But uh, my hair fall increased when I started to take this medicine. I have uh, also been taking minoxidil. Uh, so uh, after taking this medicine, my hair fall suddenly increased and. Uh, now I feel more bald than earlier. Okay. Uh, now, if you have such a report, would you call it an event or a reaction? So it's an event. It is an event. And yes, uh, what could be our basis for that? 
so actually uh, he had this past history he or she had the past history of hair fall he was taking minoxidil for it mm. and maybe minoxidil must not be working right right hmm and therefore yeah. he became so, bald so we are yeah. not sure we are still not sure of the causality because yes, there is an yes. underlying disease condition yes sir and there is a the past drug therapy patient has been taking a drug therapy for that condition already we do not know if it is a progression of the underlying disease or yes. it is a uh, issue that is caused with this medicine yes sir. so unless we are able to attribute it to our drug we don't call it a reaction yes sir. very good very good okay and uh, so once we have this reaction and we know a reporter so what are the criteria when we say uh, for a individual case now uh, we also call it as icsr yes, what sir. does icsr stand for individual case safety report individual case safety report and what is the validity criteria for that so the validity criteria are four an identifiable patient a contactable reporter which can also be an identifiable uh, suspect drug and an identifiable adverse event or a reaction hmm okay good good and uh, so uh, what are the expedited uh, criteria for reporting of a event so the expedited uh, criteria are seriousness unexpected hmm. uh, uh, are we also looking at uh, the relationship of the drug in some part of the world so i didn't get you the for sorry. expeditedness for expediting yes. the case are you also looking at the relationship no so not exactly not exactly uh, but are there any countries where we do expedited reporting of cases and you need to also check the relationship otherwise yes, you cannot report which yes, case which countries are those so european europe yes then japan japan us yes. us yes. okay very good and uh, so do you think that uh, uh, india also requires uh, causality assessment to report the case yes sir it does so we we need to report only reactions or is it that we are reporting even events so we are reporting even events as well as the reaction but the causality has to be like it has to be maintained so that it is easy for us uh, to relate to the drug yeah but the requirement says that we need to report events we are not really yes, the sir. authority is not bothered for, about for the reaction the, causal the causal, reaction. causal relationship yes sir. okay good and uh, uh, other than that uh, so once you have the uh, expedited reports what do you do with them uh, are are we processing them how do we analyze them uh, together uh, so what is an aggregate report uh, if you are aware so aggregate report is a kind of reporting in which we uh, do the uh, expected uh, expectedness of the case uh, we report in like mm -hmm. we just collect all the uh, individual uh, of an individual report. cases Mm -hmm. and we and uh, we like code into a terminology which is clinically validated in medra international mm -hmm. which is internationally okay. validated so aggregate reports are of how many types which all aggregate reports do you have so pebrar pebrar that Pebrer is period, stands for the uh, periodic benefit risk evaluation report hmm. and, and per periodic safety update report that is the psur which is yes. is it is it still applicable are we still submitting psurs no sir so we are submitting pbrr yes. but in europe do we do they call it as a pbrr or they call it as a psur so they call it as psur hmm okay and like i said so what is an aggregate report so aggregate report is it uh, any time or is it a defined period so it is for a defined period hmm right okay and the defined period you said so for marketed products you told me psur pbrr yes sir 
what about the trial products so trial products can be reported at any time they are reported at any time during the clinical trial period and even after post marketing they can be uh, reported and dsur especially dsur is for a clinical trial that is development safety update report yes very good right so the development safety update report is what you receive at the time of the development phase yes sir. okay okay uh, i think that's it for now any and uh, uh, thank you for your time uh, i believe that uh, uh, you are doing good progress in preparation and i would uh, again recommend you to you know again go through thoroughly yes, on the concepts uh, whatever are required for pharmacovigilance uh, you are clear on the basics right yes sir and yes, sir. Uh, i wish you all the best for your future endeavors thank right? you so much thank you okay. so much sir. and thank we'll you. we'll connect many time soon okay so that's yes, it sir. for now i think next student has joined me now uh, yes, sir. Nam namrata is there okay thank you any thank you sir yeah you can log off now